Welcome, Dr. James Beck at Sports Card Insights, here to talk about news you may have heard. I thought I'd pop this in on a Saturday morning here. It's July 3rd. I guess it was Thursday, perhaps, where the announcement of Collectors Holdings LP Limited uh, Partnership had acquired Golden Auctions. And Golden had just been in the news uh, a number of months ago with the, the Churning Group. But this acquisition is very interesting. It is a more complicated acquisition, I believe. Again, I'm not going to just spit back the uh, press release. I'm going to give you my first take on some of this. Some of it's just my ideas, but uh, some of it's my own uh, experiences. They acquired Ken Golden, the person, and Ken Golden's company. That's different than what happened to me because they acquired my company. But I was... You know, there's always going to be some contractual arrangement for a non-compete or uh, services. But Ken, I think, is just in his prime. He's excited about the future. And uh, he's looking at this as an enablement for him to be all he wants to be and to have an even bigger opportunity to uh, grow the business that he's grown up in and loves so much. So, again, congratulations, Ken. He's got an employment agreement and the same kind of stuff that I went through. But he's done well. Congratulations. What I see now in the collateral literature is that our industry that used to be estimated at a billion in sales or even less or one or two billion is now estimated at, at 10 billion in sales. So it's a lot more than we used to be equal to toothpaste. Now we're maybe equal to shampoo or something. But for consumer goods, we're not a huge one. But for the excitement and fun that people have, it's a lot more fun than, um, than household products. Originally was looking at this and I thought, Collectors Holdings LP, that's a pretty unimaginative name. But as I thought about it, I thought, wait a minute, if that really describes the ethos of that group, if it really is an appropriate description, then I really hope they live up to their name. Because I'm always hoping that companies in our sports collectible space are run by collector-sensitive leadership. And I believe collector-sensitive leadership like Nat Turner, Ken Golden, myself, if you have a collecting background and you're running a company, then I believe you have an edge in understanding uh, the customers, understanding the market. And when you add to that edge, the deep financial pockets that come with it in a couple of those cases, and uh, hopefully uh, the patient long-term view. But Ken Golden had just gotten this significant investment. I don't know if it was a $40 million infusion or a $40 million valuation from the Churning Group, but it was serious money. And apparently what happened after February, I'm reading between the lines, is that the scaling up that many times when a company is offered for sale, they have pro formas and here's how exciting it's going to be later this year or here's what we do next year. And there's always this, this optimistic growth scenario. My sense is that Ken Golden and the Golden auctions were living up to their projections. And so that scaling up was looking very good. They may even have exceeded it. Uh, so that's, that's not always easy to do. It's not always easy to grow a company, even when you've got a, a large war chest of money. But I think Ken was doing it, and I think the collector's holdings noticed it and jumped in because if you're growing, then the valuation's growing. Buy it sooner. The tricky part, and it's not fully articulated under this, It's they mention it, but there's going to be a bunch of separate brands all under Nat Turner's big umbrella. So this collector's holdings is going to have a, a hand in, in so many of the aspects of our industry the question will be, will there be any preferences or first among equals? If they own Golden, but they also own PSA, what does that mean for the other graders? What does that mean for other auction houses? My guess is no matter what they say, there still has to be some most favorable family pricing <laughs> and first among equals. I, I wouldn't be shocked that, that PSA would get some preference. That needs to make sense. And my discussions with Derek at, for Heritage is that their relationship is with the consigner. Their reputation is based on doing what's best for the consigner and optimizing and maximizing. My guess is though there could be a little backlash on that because just operationally speaking, it would just seem like PSA would be a great beneficiary of this move, having common ownership. And I, there just has to be synergy, even though they don't talk about that's something they're trying to run them very independently, but it, it, it's hard to not consider that. I thought it was ironic. One of the rumors about me was that I had you know, a bunch of sons who had who had you know, secret businesses in the hobby, I guess, a chain of stores, all those kind of things. Of course, I didn't have any sons when all that was coming out. But Ken does have a son. <laughs> and Ken started when he was seven. Now he's got a seven-year-old son named Paul, named after his uh, illustrious grandfather, Ken's dad, Paul Golden, who uh, they together started Scoreboard and, and really had a great ride there for a while. And then uh, Paul passed away just in his prime and he's missed. But so anyway, Ken said in his in his Twitter speech, he said he's in until young Paul's ready to take over. I love that. I think that's terrific. It's Tell it like it is. And if Ken started, he was seven, but I'm sure he's going to bring little Paul along at seven. Maybe this will have a wonderful pass along happy ending. Also, there was mention that the current owners of Golden 
also are participating in this in, in that they're going to have their equity in, in the golden auctions transferred or coming into the new larger entity. I really like that. Of course, that includes Mark Cuban, Kevin Durant, and others that you would have heard of. But it, it aligns everybody. It's, it's like a big team. And when you have team members that have uh, big megaphones, uh, I just think it's generally very positive. Nat Turner gets a lot of the uh, credit. I hope he doesn't get the blame one of these days, but he gets the credit. He's on a roll. He's the executive chairman of the board, and he's the face or the spokesperson within the hobby. He's not the only guy, and he's not even the wealthiest guy on of the group. I don't know who has more money in, but he's he's uh, certainly a multi multi millionaire. But he, he not to my knowledge, not a billionaire, which some of these others that he's in with are. So again, the deep pockets. It's always better to have deeper pockets, I think, when you're jumping into a business and being able to invest and 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 bring it to its fullest potential. But he's got Steve Cohen, the, the, the owner of the New York Mets, and Dan Sundheim, D1 Capital Partners. And it doesn't read very different, but it seems like each of these major financial entities had their own press release uh, listing themselves first. So uh, I don't think it really matters who is in the first chair, second chair, third chair. There's several wealthy entities that with uh, individuals who are stepping up saying, uh, we believe in this category. And it sounds like they really believe in Nat. And Nat seems to be, like I said, on a roll. And if there's a face of collectors holding, what more appropriate than a, than a, at this point, even at a young age, a legendary collector. So Nat, congratulations. I hope you have fun with it. And I hope it's very profitable. So lastly, again, this is not going to be in the press releases, but it's just my take on this when I try to figure out what's going on here. Again, very excited that people are uh, buying into our sports cards ecosystem. And there are many reasons why somebody would sell. I sold. I didn't think I would at one point, but then I did. There are millions of reasons to sell, as in dollars, <laughs> as Ken Golden has found out and Steve and uh, Eichenbaum and, and Mark Salzberg have found out. But what about the reasons not to sell? I've got sponsors, Beckett Media and Heritage, that are here right in town. I don't believe they're for sale. Again, I'm not sure they're for sale for any price, except any price when you're talking about uh, if somebody's going to pay twice what it's worth, but then why would they do that? What about my other sponsors? The Com C, would that be for sale? Uh, would Burbank be for sale? Mike Stadium Sports Cards to start some kind of chain of collector stores, Huggins & Scott, or any other auction company, and the card companies themselves. So... Why would somebody not sell if somebody showed up, knocked on your door and said, I'm going to give you full price for your company. I'm going to pay your price. Again, within reason. Again, if you're paying double, I think a lot of people listen to that. But you don't want to sell your company if you love what you're doing. There's a, a real question that each person answers for themselves is that if you're making enough, obviously you get more money by cashing out. But if you're making enough money that it, you don't need the money and you love what you're doing, you love who you're doing it with, then why would you sell? Uh, because then you got to go do something else. Because even if you got plenty of money, you still want to be gainfully engaged in meaningful activity. You also may not want to sell if you think you could do it better than the guys from New York or wherever they're from. Um, or you could think, I want to sell later. Now, I'm going to sell, but I'm going to more fully capture the value, or I'm going to wait until I'm closer to retirement age. There's any number of reasons why somebody wouldn't sell, even when somebody comes up and says, hey, here's a bunch of money. Take it and give me your company. Obviously, Ken Golden thought this is the time. And the fact that he's going to be staying in somewhat the driver's seat for the auction business, doing the things he loves. As I said, the original pitch that Denny Eckes made to me was, I'm going to do everything you don't want to do. Just you make a list of things you want to do. I'll do everything else. I think that's what happened for Ken. So congratulations, Ken. We go back a long way and I'm looking forward to your nurturing of your son, Paul, and seeing how all that turns out. So thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. Happy Fourth of July. Be back on Monday.